A very common question that I see asked a lot in forums and in comment sections is whether or not AMD systems can be used for Plex servers and Jellyfin servers. The reason this is a very commonly asked question is mostly to do with hardware acceleration. Intel CPUs actually have integrated graphics that let you do all of the encoding that would normally happen on the CPU to just happen on this built-in encoder that is specifically designed to transcode video so it's far more efficient than the CPU. AMD also has these built-in encoders but they have not been widely supported until very recently. But Jellyfin does claim to have full support for it on Windows, and that's how we're going to set up this very simple Jellyfin server. Just so we could see if this AMD system can actually even act as a server and how efficient it ends up being. Of course, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the Jellyfin installer and just run through the entire setup for that. Once the installer is finished, you should have the Jellyfin Tray app available here. And once you have it running, you should be able to access Jellyfin from here. From here, the web UI will just walk you through the entire process of actually setting up an account. And it's also going to ask you to essentially point it towards the media that you're going to have. Me, I'm currently setting it up to use a network folder. I have a NAS where I keep all of my video files and things like that. If you're using the system itself, then you don't need to worry about the network folder at all. You could just use the internal folders and you just point it towards that. And after running through the entire setup process, you should just be greeted to the main screen right here. Now, the system is currently scanning everything. It is a lot of different movies and TV shows. So it is going to take a little bit of time to actually scan all of this stuff in. If we actually look here in the dashboard, you can see that we are about 60% of the way through scanning just the media files. So it does take a little bit of time, but it just depends on the size of your library. My library is pretty much hundreds of videos, hundreds of movies, thousands of episodes for TV shows. So we're talking about a lot of content that is being scanned right now. And actually one thing I wanna point out is that you could see here on task manager that the system itself is actually doing a lot of work right now. And it just has to do with the fact that it has to scan in a lot of different files, get the metadata for all of that. It's pretty much doing a lot of things in the background for the initial setup, but because we have a very powerful six core 12 thread CPU, it's actually able to handle this pretty well to the point where we still have headroom to the CPU. So if we were just using this for our day-to-day -day computer, we just had all of this running in the background, we more than likely would not even notice that anything is really happening in the background. And that's one of the biggest benefits of having so many cores to work with. But while everything is scanning in, I want to make sure the transcoding is actually enabled. So I set it to AMD AMF and I have it enabled for H.264, H.265, VC1, VP9. And pretty much from there, you're good to go. That's all you really have to set and then you just save it from there. So now to actually test out to see if we have the hardware transcoding working, here you can see that I actually have the new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse movie, both playing on my desktop where it's directly playing, so no transcoding happening there whatsoever, which means there is no load being put on the system, but also here on my phone, there is actually transcoding happening. So this is a 4K video file being transcoded down to H.264 at 1080p. And you can see here in the task manager for, that for the GPU, video codec zero is actually seeing utilization, which means that hardware transcoding is actually happening right now. So what that means is that as you can see, the CPU utilization is practically non-existent and we already have two movies playing right now of course most streams are actually just going to end up being direct plays anyway which means it's going to have absolutely no impact on the performance of the system but now we know that if anything needs to be transcoded most times it's really just going to be done by the igpu and again it's not going to affect our cpu performance at all so we're going to be able to pretty much continue to use this system as a day-to-day -day computer anyway and we won't even notice that there's a jellyfin server running in the background now of course there are certain advantages to just switching over to making this a dedicated linux system and having jellyfin run on that but if you want a quick 
easy and dead simple way of setting up a Jellyfin server. You can do it on here. And as you can see, it does work very well with AMD systems. The only thing I could recommend now is to really just upgrade the RAM and the storage. 15 gigabytes of RAM is perfectly adequate, really. But as you can see, just having Jellyfin running in the background and things being watched does actually end up affecting the overall RAM utilization. Throw in some 32 gigabytes of RAM and maybe a one terabyte SSD, along with maybe a two to four terabyte SATA SSD, and you now have a very compact, very nice Jellyfin server. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.